Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Modern Warfare Remastered in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the M14 Assault Rifle. This is one of my favorites from Call of Duty 4. I have a lot of fond memories of it, and it's generally a fun weapon in every Call of Duty game it's in because of its obscenely high damage. Unfortunately, I don't think this one has aged as well as my memories of it have, and I had a very frustrating time using it. I think it's just because there are many other guns that are much better, but the M14 can be ridiculously fun sometimes. Let's go ahead and start the review with the magazine size, which is a little bit lower than usual. There's only 20 rounds in the magazine instead of the standard 30, which is kind of low, but it's a higher damage weapon, so it needs less shots to kill. And speaking of damage, it'll deal a colossal 50 damage up close and decrease just a little bit down to 40 at range, meaning that it will take between two and three shots to kill, depending on how far away you are, which is very high damage. But I would like to point out that the 50 damage range is kind of short. However, if you you put stopping power on it, it'll increase up to 70 damage up close and 56 at long range, meaning that it's two shots to kill at infinite range, which is really awesome and really high. Once you put stopping power on it, it truly is a two hit or quit assault rifle. But taking a step back without stopping power, the two shot kill range is very short. It's only a little bit better than shotgun range in a lot of circumstances. Don't expect a lot of two shot kills if you're not running stopping power. But one of the awesome things about the M14, one of the things that really makes it the gun it is, is the sheer power of headshots. I'm gonna go ahead and show a little montage of the headshot ranges while I talk about this. But headshots and neck shots both deal 1.5x damage in a game where the headshots typically deal 1.4 and there's often not a multiplier for the neck. This is higher and the hitbox is bigger and it can kill in one shot up to some very, very impressive ranges if you hit people in the head or neck. And that's what makes the M14 the monster that it is. And that's really the way to use it is to put some sort of optic on it and to go for headshots, to try and just instant nuke people across the map. It's a very high skill, very high risk, high reward, difficult tactic, but that's what makes the gun so fun and occasionally rewarding. Rate of fire is 635 rounds per minute. It's semi-automatic, but it's capped. It's no longer 1,200 rounds per minute, so there certainly is a finite fire rate that you can move it up to, and that's closer to the maximum of people's trigger fingers anyway, so most of you that aren't cheating won't notice a difference. The M14 has a theoretically very fast time to kill if you get your insta-kill headshot or you get your two shots back-to-back -back at that maximum fire rate. However, it's going to be slower in practice. In practice, it's more of a long-range poke weapon. The recoil is a little bit high. Not too many people do the double tap insta kill without missing. And the difference between theory and practice is bigger in practice than it is in theory, so keep that in mind. The M14 has pretty overall standard assault rifle handling stats, uh, aim down sights, raise drop, reload, swap, uh, hip fire, sprint speeds, all of those sort of handling, handling statistics are very normal on the M14 compared to other assault rifles. Nothing's really better or worse, not even hip fire. However, the M14 does have very low idle sway, like a lot of the other assault rifles in the game, that makes it very accurate. However, if you put an ACOG sight on it, the idle sway will increase significantly, and it will be much more difficult to hit targets at long range. But don't get me wrong, I'm not hating on the ACOG sight today, it's actually not a bad attachment for for this weapon. I'll talk about it a little bit more later on. One of the other unique attachment interactions is that you'll get slightly tighter hip fire with the silencer and by tighter I mean your maximum spread is a little bit tighter and I mean it is only very 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 slight. Uh, honestly you probably won't notice it but I thought it was a neat little fact to throw into the in-depth episode. When it comes to accuracy, precision, recoil, all that sort of stuff, the gun kicks like a mule but it kicks straight up. A lot of people, myself included, really enjoy vertical recoil, and on most guns I'm very happy to have vertical recoil, but I find the M14's recoil to be difficult to control for headshots. It kicks up just a little bit too much, and I'm oftentimes going for the one-shot headshots to really punish people, which means if I don't hit my first shot, there's going to be a significant delay before the second one. It's probably a smarter tactic to go and just do the quick double tap for the body to get the kills. However, there's so many other weapons that do it much better, like the M16. With the M14, I'm truly trying to maximize its potential and pop people in the head, but unfortunately the follow-up shots are difficult because it kicks up really, really high. And unfortunately, the 
the iron sights are bad for this type of gun. They're not actually that terrible, all things considered, for Call of Duty, but I do find them obstructive, and especially at long ranges. If you're shooting somebody at long range, and the gun kicks up just a little bit, you'll have a lot of problems. The four sights are a little bit obstructive, so I feel like Velma trying to find my glasses when I'm trying to acquire a target at long range, and after a shot or two, when the hindsight kicks up and your whole gun is blocking your view, I basically feel like LeVar Burton here. Moving on to a section you probably never thought you'd see on in-depth, adding an ACOG sight doesn't really hurt the M14. It's actually pretty good with the ACOG sight, it lets you hit people at long ranges. However, once you do that, it becomes statistically almost identical to the M21, but the M21 with an ACOG sight is just plain better. It just outperforms da damage range, headshot areas, recoil, pretty much everything. So if you're going to run the M14 with an ACOG sight, why not just run the M21 instead? Because they're going to be pretty much the same thing. And while I think the M14 can be fun, it's outclassed by too many other weapons. It's outclassed by the M16 because you can two-shot people at similar ranges with much greater accuracy and follow-up shots. The M21 is basically a better version of this weapon, especially when you put an ACOG sight on it. They're almost identical. And maybe even the G3 being somewhat easier to use and somewhat less recoil, less predictable, mind you, but it's closer to target and it settles faster. And there's so many other guns that kill you so incredibly quickly it's usually not worth it to risk going for headshots with the M14, and I would never really recommend the M14 in any sort of competitive or sweaty or helicopter earning scenario. It's just a fun gun. It feels good, it sounds good, it's satisfying, it gets headshots, but is it really a competitive weapon? No, no it's not. And as for how to run it, I'm actually going to say you can run it with a red perk of your choice. It's not that terrible if you run it with UAV Jammer or Juggernaut, but I personally prefer stopping power for the headshots. Red dot sight is just simply the way to go. It's the best attachment. And I also run deep impact so that I can wall bang people very, very easily. Guys, that's all for this in-depth episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.